the actual in the thermal dynamic limit and in thermal dynamic limit you solve this problem by a second point of oscillation. So you expose the uh, the log and essentially you externalize this guy and you evaluate this guy that is extreme. So the do a second point of oscillation. You find the set of chemical potential that satisfies the equation, you plug it back and you read your entropy. Uh, so since this should be the exponential of the entropy you get this formula. So you can compute the entropy essentially by taking the, the log of C, which is a function of T, delta minus C times delta Q. So here there are many indices, if there are more than one zero symmetry. And this is evaluated at the uh, point where the derivative is zero. Okay? This is a, if you want, it's just standard statistical mechanics. And this is the legal transform of the log of C. Okay? So the entropy is just the legal transform of the log of C. So this is the setup. Uh, uh, this guy I will call to the zero in a moment for you. And I'll show you that, uh, you see, uh, you can see the electron transform as an experimentation problem if you want. You take this combination, you experimentate it and you color it back. And uh, I told you yesterday that from the point of view of the black hole, there is indeed an experimentation process that you can use to collect. Okay, I'll show you that this, this, this formula here matches precisely with uh, the formula for the transform mechanism that I gave you yesterday. Let me notice that uh, this formula, the electron transform and the constructor of partition function, is appearing in a similar way in many other computations for black holes. So if you compare the um, OSD formally, you will find that it's like Similar. So there's a different object that you externalize. If you uh, look at the entropy functional uh, introduced by the shock and uh, uh, study by Jim and many other collaborators, you will find again that there is a very similar structure. Uh, with the uh, thing that replaces particular other objects that are defined in the first place. Okay, so, uh, so now I want to apply this probe, this, uh, this idea, to a specific case. As I told you yesterday, some of the black, this black hole can be embedded in uh, in, in, in theory and are associated to EDS4 times F7. So lucky, lucky enough, uh, we know what is the dual theory of uh, the three-dimensional dual theory uh, to EDS4 times F7. Actually, we also know something more. Uh, we know what is the dual theory of EDS4 times F7 mod CK. Uh, is the same old EJM model that I briefly review at least a matter of content uh, for you. Uh, the, this, is, this appears as a point grouping solution of uh, 11 dimensional supergravity. So the background is actually something like that. There is a EDS4, there is a direct product with the main second F7 mod CK, and there is also a non trivial purple which is proportional to the uh, length of the radius of the sigma cube and the volume of the reference matrix that you choose on EDS4. And uh, the um, uh, the dual the theory is can be written in any possible notation as a theory with two gauge groups and by fundamental fields. AI, I goes from one to two, transforming the fundamental representation of the first group and in the fundamental representation of the second one. And there are chance cycles term that I write here, so there is a chance cycle uh, K for the first group and chance cycles minus K for the second group. This is usually a teacher uh, in this way with nodes that represent the UN gauge groups and arrows that represent the five fundamental fields, AI and VAT. And the direction of the arrow tells you uh, that the uh, one which goes out is the fundamental of the UN and the anti fundamental of the second UN. And usually also people uh, somewhere put the, the value of the transcribers in the picture just to add all the information in a compact setting. And there is also super potential, as I told you, super potential doesn't play almost any role in the, uh, in the localization business, but it obviously tells you what are the global symmetries, so it's important to, to have a look always at the superpotential just to fix the symmetry of the theory. And the dictionary tells you that uh, uh, the, the length here is obviously related to the field theory parameters, which are n and k, and the precise relation uh, is well. Up to coefficient is uh, uh, this one. So uh, the fixed power of L is n times k. So this model has been studied in 10 years, it has many interesting properties. Uh, so, um, the, uh, actually, the, the supersymmetry is, okay, the magnitude of supersymmetry is n equal to 6, not only n equal to 2, uh, and in the particular case, uh, k equal 1 and 2, uh, the supersymmetry is announced, so the g is announced, to n equal to 8, which is the right amount, the maximum amount of supersymmetry for a second. So, so happens when you take a push of c2. Uh, and similarly, when k is 1 or 2, the, the levels of the um, uh, asymmetry of the, of the theory is again announced by, in, in the monopole, so you need to introduce some non perturbative contribution in your, in your set of operators, is announced to SOA. Uh, the shape of one is the case that I want to look at, it's a case of... Yeah. 
Yeah, we just picked Sean here. We can tap one. So I can use there and see if it's a fit shot for uh, his theory. And so I will take a little bit where I've changed one essentially, and then it's going to be easy. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And there's something else interesting that you probably know is that this is the uh, model, uh, one of the interesting stories about localization, one of the first interesting results after Pestum was the computation by Marino and collaborator or subject, free energy on a tree, so it's a different man, well, it's not the man that I'm considering, it's another one, it's a localization, the first example in three dimensions was worked out. And the field theory computation tells you that. Uh, uh, it's free energy, scale like and the three level. I think Robert, I'm just going to study this condition then, but we're going to have to, I mean, some of the three level metrics, we can hold it to the energy, it's very hard for us to do. So let's see, L, L is the radius, so, um, let me see, um, so, uh, the type 2 is, the type 2 description which we can really couple as a condition. The type 2 is the limit where N over K, is uh, cosine and k equals infinity and the ratio is final. So you're asking if I just write that condition, you don't see how the... Uh, well, uh, if you just see the, that condition, if n is, uh, uh, you would say that n times k must be bigger than, than 1. Uh, uh, I have the impression that you have to take uh, uh, a different limit, but I can check. Yeah, I don't see immediately from there. Uh, certainly satisfies k equal 1 and goes to infinity, this is weak enough, okay, that's okay. Uh, I remember a scale, well, well, I can tell you, but I understand your point, yeah, if I look at the data, it looks uh, this way. Um, okay, so, uh, the free energy, uh, this computation gave us the three over two, uh, which is a funny behavior for a theory, and it was a given effect, it was expected, because if you value the free energy of the is four, using reality, you get a precise result. Even the coefficients uh, are exact. Uh, if you want to have a look at this computation, I think it's included in this Marino lecture that I mentioned last day. You can have a look. There are also other information about the DJM that you may want to know. Uh, if you never saw it before. Okay, so uh, I'm also interested in K equal 1. Uh, and um, uh, the single phase, in this case, is announced to F8, but I'm interested in the capacity of algebra. Okay. Uh, there are obviously four of you uh, possible asymmetry that you can write. Uh, and uh, so the only constraint on an asymmetry is that the superpotential has uncharged 2. So you can give uh, uncharged 2 to this guy, 3 to the other. And this is a basis of four, of four possible asymmetries that correspond in the sense in an equal way to the capital of the uh, so the four guy, A1, uh, A2, B1, and B2, it's like they parameterize the sense in the of this way. Oh, remember that uh, uh, asymmetry are not uniquely defined because uh, when you have uh, several symmetry, you can mix them, and indeed, uh, each of these guys is a perfectly good asymmetry. They can, they can use to this. Um, there's also a concept of the next set of symmetry, which is the one sitting in the... Um, uh, in the special sense of multiplet, uh, and this is a particular combination of these guys that you should find by answer. Uh, now, you can also take the point of view that you choose one of these asymmetry, and at this point, if you choose one, say, four, then the difference is, you divide by two, parameterize three possible flavor symmetry of your theory. Okay? So the logic is that you have one asymmetry that you choose among them, and, and the three other guys are three flavor symmetry, you want flavor symmetry of your theory. So, So I already wrote to you the expression of the uh, in index for this theory using the same rule that I discussed a few days ago, uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday and on Monday. So let me, uh, let me explain uh, what is going on. So this is the expression of uh, the full partition function. The full partition function is a sum always on over a lattice of magnetic fluxes. Here there are two different case groups, so there are two sets of magnetic fluxes. The group is UN, so the linear quantization condition is simple, these are just integer. So there is a lattice which is just the end. Then there is also an integration over the Katzan gauge variable, or this one. Uh, Xi are the guy that uh, originally I uh, introduced in the previous lecture uh, in the notation that I use are exponential of the um, Wilson line, the complexified Wilson line of the theory. And you have to integrate it over these guys, and here I forgot to put uh, the, the natural measure that is that is the Xi over Xi. Uh, so this, uh, this is the remaining of the integration over the gauge variables. This factor is just the, the order of the value group. It eliminates the, the permutation among the X and the field, which is actually a symmetry. And the integrand is, this is the expression. So this is the contribution of the vector field. 
En dan gaat het nieuws van Van Hoorde van het geel, die komt uit de Maïtia, en dat is mijn van JDA. En dit is even waar ik het voor blijf houden, en dan moet ik het even houden. En hier wil ik op je wel uit te gaan, en je krijgt tot het pasje. En de eerste is, de final result is simpel, because you can rewrite in this way. So you find the solution of the equation, you put it VI equal 1, you put it IV tilde equal 1. Okay, it's called the solution X star, and this integral is down. Uh, it's on this form. So at the denominator you do the residue theorem, and essentially you need to linearize this object, and you get the determinant of d over u, and in fact the final result is essentially this one. As the position, you need to evaluate uh, uh, this bulk term, and put the denominator, which is the determinant of this matrix, to the power 1 minus c. So this would be the result given at final n. Now the logic is that uh, I want to have a limit, and I hope, and uh, uh, Luke is uh, successful, successfully realized because it's nice, thank you for the black hole, that this sum, because there will be a sum over many solutions. Here you have to find the xi and that's uh, till the i, and there are many solutions. In particular, there are many that are just simply permutation, these are accounted by this factor, these are trivial, but in addition to uh, permutation and solution, you have many different solutions of this type of equation. You need to find all of them, the hope is that there is one that dominates uh, the sum. So you recycle point in this way, you find the, uh, the solution that dominates this, uh, this equation. So essentially what you do is, is to set up a cycle point, a large end computation, to find uh, the symbol of the denominator, okay, the poles. Uh, so uh, the large end computation is now, this is a second symmetric model, and I can use a technique that has been developed for matrix model. Um, so from now on, uh, so my problem now is to find the solutions of this, uh, of this problem. Well, the, now the formula is okay also for generic k, and uh, in, the, in the actual computation I will set the k equal 1, but it doesn't change too much. k is uh, uh, coming from here only. Here there's a k, so you see x, k, m, so you have x to the k. So the contribution of your sign on this, this one. So this is not really a model. Maybe it is, but in my experience, it's not what they would call a standard method model. You don't find them in this method of solution in the many reviews of method model that you find on the, on the side. But luckily enough, there's a method that works very well that was developed before, for example, for the, for the computation of the partition factor on the step. So you don't have to use that uh, free energy behavior, you can use a very similar computation, actually, it's actually then, it's actually it. And um, so uh, the idea is that, uh, and uh, you did, Oh, well, when you have to solve the metric model, the first thing that you should do is can you put some uh, numerical uh, analysis. Okay. The numerical analysis usually tells you how the eigenvalue scales with the algorithm. And if you do numerical analysis, you discover that uh, here are the eigenvalues, uh, so the UI uh, scales in a funny way then. So they grows uh, when n goes. Typically, this is not the case for uh, the standard uh, uh, metric model that is always using the resolver and so on. So you have a finite uh, interval where your eigenvalue is. But here it's not the case. So what you find from uh, numerical uh, analysis that this guy is a scale. In particular, the imaginary part draws with some power of n. So they become large, instead the, the real part remain bounded. So what you do, what you do in the metric model system, is uh, in the large n you go to continuous variables, so you define a new a function t, such that that's evaluated uh, in i over n, reproduce the imaginary part, that I call ti, you introduce another function, i over n, that reproduce the value vi, so you make everything, everything continuous with this trick, and uh, you also introduce a density of eigenvalue in the continuum limit, you need to say what is the density of this guy, and you can come this formally in this way, it's a sort of derivative of how i varies with t, and this guy is uh, always normalized with the density, in such a way that when you then integrate over the continuous parameter that models your eigenvalue, you get one. Uh, so what are the in this limit? So first of all, uh, let me write, uh, let me tell you that, uh, let me tell you that these two sets of equations, there are two n of them, can be obtained as the zeros of a particular potential function. So now I write for you. Uh, 